Hi and welcome to the ADF Architecture TV channel. My name is Grant Ronald and I'm Director of Product Management in Oracle's Application Development Tools Division. So in this episode we're going to look at the usability and the layout design of ADF applications and in particular understanding how our users and how we might start prototyping out layouts using techniques like wireframing. Now, there are a number of challenges facing us as software developers when it comes to developing apps. Firstly, we have a much more discerning user. Gone are the days when you'd come to your office and the computer program you use was pretty much your only ex exposure to a, a computer. Today, there are more people using computers for applications to do things like our shopping, uh, sharing photos, interacting with our friends, and this makes us a lot more demanding of our applications. Uh, no longer are people willing to put up with green screen character mode applications. We have much higher demands now. The next challenge uh, is physical dimensions. We used to design for 960 pixel width and any difference in screen size had very little impact on the application other than some scrolling or some margins. But think of now we have smartphones with 4 inch screens, we have things like these 10 inch tablets uh, and we still have large monitors but our applications have to be accessible from any sort of device, whether we're running at home or on the road or accessing from the office. And finally, there are challenges around things like, will this application work in different browsers? Will it support tablet gestures like swipe and pinch? And can it be used with a screen reading technology? So all of these are considerations for us as software developers. Now the key to UX or user experience um, for your ADF application starts with first of all understanding the user. So I'm going to have a quick test. Let's play a game here. I'm going to show you a website for five seconds and then I'm going to hide it and ask you a few questions about what you remember from that web page. Here we go. So what did you remember from looking at that page? Who was the company? What were they trying to sell you? How did you read the page? Did you read from left to right? Did you read top to bottom? Or did you jump around? Uh, how did your eyes scan that page at first? So generally speaking, the way that we read the screen is in the same order as you read your own language. So for me, I read that page from left to right, from top to bottom. And the brain and the eye remember shapes and structures as well. So keeping sections with similar order helps stop you tripping up the brain. And obviously your most important content should be immediately visible so that it's right there in the eye line. And of course the brain likes things to be very neat and tidy. So it makes it much easier to cue the eye up as you start reading down to the next line as well. So the gist of layout in general has to do with the arranging of all your information so that it's read in the proper order and that groups of things are where the eye expects those objects to be, as well as establishing any relationships between objects. Now those are all just fancy words for talking about tidy organisation, but it has a result. If something's not where it's expected, the users keep going there anyway. That's learned behaviour. And it's not something you can easily retrain without a cost. And it irritates your users and it affects the perception of your application to them. So fundamentally you're trying to leverage the way the eye looks at things to improve the scannability. The eye is going to jump from object to object in a certain way. And so you want to lay things out in that way to help them move through the page the way that they're expecting to move through. Now the implications of this are that things are important to the user menus, toolbars, these kind of things, will be in the topmost section of the page. Things important to the company, like logo, are up there too. And if you start following this F shape, you pull over to the left-hand side of the screen, and you usually get some sort of secondary navigation, like you do in Wikipedia. And once the eye spotted that, the, sky, the eye will scan over that way again, from left to right, and down the side for all these pages. If you put anything in a different order, you start to interrupt this natural pattern. And that's why pages are often constructed in this upside down or, or uh, F, upside down L shape or, or F shape where you move along the top and down the side. 
So people are hardwired to read in this typical way. And Jacob Nielsen, one of our UX experts, talks about this F shape. And that's the order in which stuff is generally read. And it's just like you're reading a book. The only difference is you have a much broader sweep on a web page or an application. But we're still following the page from left to right, top to bottom, important concepts at the top, and then moving down the left-hand side for things like secondary navigation as well. So these are examples of three web pages with eye-tracking data that's overlaid as a heat map. And you'll notice that you can see this F shape in all three examples of the eye tracking data. Now, we've followed the same visual rhythms for our design and our UX of our Fusion applications in Oracle. So here's an example of a Fusion page using those same principles. And you'll notice that your eye goes across the top to see the high level actions. Then your eye returns and it sees the regional area, then it ping-pongs around the content area. And the first two sweeps help set this context on the page for the next time you go back and visit a Fusion application, so the eye knows where to go. Now let's have a look at alignment. Now the reason this is important is, as you might not have noticed in the first slide in this sequence, the page is very wonky. You, the person, might not have spotted it, but your brain did. And your brain's going to tell you that the page is sloppy or substandard. Your eyes are going to have to have trouble scanning the pages because it isn't able to travel in clean lines. And your brain's going to think, why is it some things are, are, are not aligned or, or unintentionally grouped together? And in some cases, these are just little jogs. And here you can see the horizontal lines showing misalignment and the vertical lines showing column alignment. Now, if you think back to how people read and you don't have a clean alignment in your book, both horizontally and vertical, even just minor jogs interrupts your eyes and it makes it much more difficult to read. So imagine a page in a book where you're reading the text and the words are slightly jiggled up and down when you're trying to scan the page. Your eye is not able to do this in such a precise fashion and if it's not getting a clean shot across the page, your eye starts to stutter slightly. And this produces two results. One, you slow down the user's ability to scan the page, and two, it gives a pretty poor user experience to your page, even if it's a well-designed, functional page or application in many other aspects. So what have we learned in this lesson? The first is that users have high expectations and how to build applications and the expectations of using those applications and we must meet or exceed those expectations. We need to understand how the user looks at a page and as you've seen there's a predictable pattern for looking at a web application scanning along the top for important information and then pulling back to the left hand side assuming you're reading left to right. And this mirrors the way our own Fusion applications have been designed and is already baked into so many of our ADF Faces components such as the UI shell or Dynamic Tab shell. So thanks for watching this episode of ADF Architecture TV and in the next episode we'll be looking at prototyping using wireframing techniques. Thank you very much for watching.